Hey guys, this video is going to start our next unit of study, which is going to be over polynomial functions. In this first lesson, we're just going to take a look at some of the basics. The first half of the video is going to be a review of some vocabulary that we used last year when we talked about polynomials and factoring. And then the second half of the video is going to be um, some things that are a little bit new, uh, but again, it's pretty basic. We're just going to be talking about how uh, the equation for a polynomial function affects the graph. And then we'll get into some uh, greater depth problems in the coming videos after we come back from break. Uh, so this per first part of the video uh, is just going to, like I said, review some vocabulary from Algebra 1. Uh, the first part of your notes, you have a chart uh, that just goes through some of the basic vocabulary terms we'll be talking about and using this unit. And so um, our first term we have is the term monomial. Monomial refers to a number, a variable, or the product of numbers and variables. So when I'm talking about a not monomial, I'm talking about things like 5 or x or 6x squared. Okay, so no addition or subtraction in monomials, as opposed to polynomials, uh, which stands for two or more monomials put together using a sum or a difference. So x plus 5 would be an example of a polynomial, 6x squared minus 3x plus 4. That's what we mean by polynomials, okay? Basically two or more terms put together in an expression. The degree of a polynomial, we talked about this last year, is the value of the largest exponent. So we just got done talking about quadratic uh, functions, degree two uh, functions, and this next unit will be talking about higher degrees. And so the largest exponent you see means the degree. So if you have f of x equals 7x minus 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 8, the largest exponent is a 4, that would be a degree 4. A polynomial function would simply be a function or equation that can be written as a polynomial. And the key there is your exponents have to be whole numbers. So f of x equals x squared plus 5x minus 7 is an example. Another example would be p of x equals 3 fourths x to the fourth minus 1 half x squared. So whole number exponents uh, is what gives you a polynomial function. And then finally, standard form just means that your exponents are written in descending order uh, from left to right. Okay, so you start with the term with the largest exponent and you work your way down. So an example of a function written in standard form would be uh, this negative 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 7x minus 8, starting with your largest exponent and ending with your constant. So that's just, again, a quick review of some uh, vocabulary you should uh, be familiar with. In this next chart down here, we're going to go through and just uh, talk about the terminology we use for classifying polynomials by degree and by number of terms. Again, this should be a review for you from Algebra 1. So if a polynomial is degree 0, that means that there's no variable with it. Okay, it's The variable has a 0 exponent, and so we call that a constant. Okay, So for example, uh, the number 5 it has no variable, so it would be referred to as a constant polynomial. If the degree of a polynomial is 1, that means that there is a variable and its exponent is 1. Okay, so x plus 4 would be an example of that. That is what we call a linear polynomial. If the largest exponent is a 2, so you have an x squared, that is what we refer to as a quadratic. A degree 3 would be called a cubic, highest exponent of 3. A degree 4, we actually call that a quartic polynomial. So if the highest exponent is 4, that's the vocabulary term for that. And then degree 5 would be quintic. Anything above degree 5, so 6 or more, we don't really have a special name for it. We just call it uh, a degree 6 or a 6 degree polynomial, etc. Okay, so that's how you can uh, name and classify a polynomial by its degree. We also have a way to name or classify by the number of terms. So if there is just one term, for example, 5, that's just a one-term polynomial, that is called a monomial. If there are two terms, for instance, x plus 4, we call that a binomial. Uh, 4x squared, that would again be a one term, so that would be a quadratic monomial. Three terms, 4x cubed minus 2x squared plus x has three separate terms, that's what we call a trinomial. And then 2x to the fourth plus 5x squared, that's a two term, so that would be a binomial. So we've done one, two, and three terms. If you have anything more than three terms, so four, 
or more, that's gonna just be called a polynomial with that many terms. So in this case, this last one would be a quintic polynomial with four terms. Okay, so down here below in examples one and two, we're just gonna practice using some of this vocabulary. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is write each polynomial in standard form. So start with the term with the largest exponent. For number one, our largest exponent is a two, so we'll have our nine x squared first, and then we'll go with our three x term, so plus three x, and then in with our constant term, plus five. And then we're gonna classify it by degree and by number of terms. This is a degree two, so we're gonna call this a uh, quadratic, and there are three terms, so we'll say this is a quadratic trinomial. For number two, um, we're gonna start with our highest exponent again, that term is the x to the fourth, so we'll start there. And then we have uh, two terms that have x squared in them, a negative six x squared and a 10 x squared. If I combine those, I get a positive four x squared. My next term uh, is a 4x, so plus 4x, and then finally our constant goes last, minus 12. So when you're writing in standard form, you just want to make sure you're simplifying and combining like terms whenever possible. Uh, this here is a degree 4, so we're going to call that a quartic, and it's a polynomial with four terms. Okay, so that first part of the video was about some of the Algebra 1 vocabulary and just reviewing that. And in this next part of the video, we're going to talk about some of the new concepts. And what this is really going to focus on is telling what the shape of the graph is going to be based on what the equation looks like. And we're going to look at two things on all these graphs here in this section. We're going to look at what are called turning points. And then we're going to look at what uh, is called end behavior of a graph. And each of these different characteristics of a graph, both turning points and end behavior, uh, we can use the degree of the equation to tell what is going on with these two things on the graph, okay? What the turning points are doing uh, and what the end behavior is doing. So I'm gonna start with turning points and just explain what those mean. Then we're gonna go into a little bit more detail on end behavior and then we'll finish up coming back to turning points. Okay, uh, but just to give you an idea what these mean. So the turning points on a graph uh, are where the graph changes direction, basically. Okay, so let's just take a quick example. You can sketch somewhere here on the side of your notes. Let's say we have a graph that uh, begins increasing like this, and then all of a sudden it starts decreasing. Well, that point up there where it starts decreasing is what we call a turning point, okay, because that's the little hump uh, that's the point where the graph changes direction from increasing uh, in terms of y values and then decreasing. And then uh, if the graph started decreasing and then turned again and started increasing, then the graph would have another turning point down here uh, at the bottom of this little valley. Okay, so that's what I mean by the term turning points. And as you can see, those are basically the maximum and minimum points on a graph. And then you might also hear the term local maximum or local minimum thrown around in this class or others, and what that means is the exact same thing as a turning point, okay? So if you hear that phrase local maximum or local minimum, that just means a turning point. Uh, the other thing we're gonna talk about, again, uh, on graphs is what's called in behavior. And so what in behavior means is what is a graph doing to the far left or to the far right, okay? In behavior are the directions of the graph to the far left and to the far right. And there are four types of end behavior on a graph. Okay, one type of end behavior is what we call up and up, and that just means that on the far left, a graph is going upwards, and on the far right, it's going upwards. Doesn't really matter what's happening in the middle. Uh, so an example of end behavior would be something that looks like this. Okay, on the far left, the graph is going upwards, and on the far right, it's going upwards. Okay, I could really do anything I'd, I could want to in the middle. The key is that uh, the graph is going upwards on the left and the right. Uh, we also have what's called down and down in behavior. So that just means on the far left and the far right, the graph is going downwards. Uh, so that would be an example of down and down right there. We have down and up in behavior, which means on the left, the graph is going downwards, but on the right, it's going upwards like this. 
and then we also have up and down, which just means the opposite uh, of down and up. On the left side, the graph is going upwards, and on the right side, it's going downwards, just like that. Okay, so uh, keeping in mind those four types of end behavior, I actually want to skip ahead to examples um, three through six, and we're going to de describe the end behavior of each of these equations. I'm going to teach you how to do that, and then after we do that, we're going to go back to uh, the chart and fill that in. Okay, so to determine the end behavior of a graph, we actually need to look at two things on the equation. Okay, and the first thing we need to look at is the leading coefficient of the equations. Uh, now, that's not a term I've defined here in the notes, but that's a term we've used before, okay, in algebra. The leading coefficient is just referring to the coefficient on the term with the largest exponent or the highest degree. So in this case, number three, uh, the largest exponent we have is a three, so the leading coefficient would be four. If your polynomials are in standard form, then your leading coefficient is just going to be the one that leads or the one that comes first, okay? So in this case, my leading coefficient is 4, and the key here is that 4 is a positive number, okay? So anytime our leading coefficient is positive, that means that the right side of the graph is always going to be going upwards. So I know that this end behavior here, the right side, is go going to be going upwards. I'm just going to use an arrow uh, to represent that. Once I figure out whether my leading coefficient is positive or sometimes negative, then I'm going to look at my degree. The degree of this graph is 3, and 3, of course, we know is an odd number. Okay, so because my degree is odd, that makes the left side of the graph do the opposite of what the right side is doing. Think about odd and opposite, both start with O. So because the right side we already know is going up, that means the left side of this graph is going downwards, and we have what's called down and up in behavior. Okay, so I don't really know what the middle of this graph is going to look like, but I do know that on the far left it's going downwards, and on the far right it's going upwards. Looking at number four, we're going to do the exact same thing. The first thing we're going to look at is the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient of this one is negative two. Okay, so in this case my leading coefficient is negative. Anytime you have a negative leading coefficient, that makes the right side of the graph go downwards, so this time uh, the right side of my graph is going to be doing this. Then we'll take a look at the degree. Okay, the degree of uh, this polynomial here is 4. 4 is, of course, an even number. Anytime you have an even degree polynomial, uh, the left side does the same thing as the right. Okay, so the left in behavior is going to be the exact same as the right. Because the right side is going downwards, that means the left side is also going to be going downwards. So we have what's called down and down in behavior for number four here. Okay, number five, the leading coefficient for this one is a negative four. So because my leading coefficient is negative, that means that the right side of this graph, just like number four, will be going downwards. My degree is three. Okay, three is an odd number. And so that means that the left side of the graph is going to be doing the opposite from the right side, just like we had number three up here. Uh, and so since the right side is going downwards, that means the left side is going to be going upwards. And so we have up and down in behavior for this one. And then finally, number six, the leading coefficient for number six, you might be tempted to say is negative two, but be careful. If you look carefully, this polynomial is not written in standard form. The highest exponent we see is a three, or is a x to the fourth, so that means that the leading coefficient is actually this positive three right here. Okay, so it's always the coefficient on the term with the highest exponent, uh, and again, if your polynomial is not written in standard form, then you have to be careful uh, when you're identifying that leading coefficient. So because it's three in this case, uh, that means that my leading coefficient is positive. And that means that the right side of this graph is going to be going upwards. We then look at the degree. Okay, well, we already know that the highest exponent is a four. So that means that the degree is four, uh, which is an even number. 
And what that means is that, the is that the left side is doing the same thing as the right, so the left side is also going upwards. So this would be an example of up and up in behavior. So that's what I mean when I say determine the end behavior of the graph. Okay, you're going to look at two uh, things. You're going to look, first of all, at the leading coefficient. Is it negative or positive? And then from that, you're going to look at the degree, whether it's odd or even. Okay, so now we can fill in this chart uh, that we skipped. And this chart is just basically describing uh, the rules that we just did. Okay, so we know um, if the leading coefficient is negative, the right side's always go going to be going downwards. So in this case, the right side will be going downwards, and also in this case here, the right side will be going downwards. If the leading coefficient is positive, we know that the right side will be going upwards, so here and here. And then you always do the left side uh, based on what the right side is doing, and for that you look at the degree. So if the degree is odd, the left will be do always be doing the opposite of the right. So in this case, uh, leading coefficient negative, the left side would be going upwards because the right side's going down. Over here, the left side would be going down because the right side's going up. Okay, so we'd have down, uh, we'd have up and down in this situation, down and up in this situation. And then over here, uh, if the degree is even, that means the left side will be doing the same thing as the right. So we'd have down and down in this situation, and finally up and up in this situation. Okay, so that's a little bit of look at in behavior. We're gonna practice that a little bit more in class, uh, but that's just a brief introduction to that. And then the final thing I wanna talk about is turning points. I wanna go back to uh, that phrase turning points. Again, just points in the graph for the graph changes direction. And we're gonna look at how to determine the possible number of turning points based on the equation of a graph. Okay, so the rule for this is the maximum number of turning points a graph can have is always going to be one less than its degree. Okay, a lot of this all goes back to degree. So for turning points, uh, the maximum number a graph can have is one less than its degree. If the, if the uh, polynomial has an odd degree, that means that you're going to have an even number of turning points. So an odd degree will give you an even number of turning points. An even degree will give you an odd number of turning points. So the number of turning points is always going to be opposite of the degree in terms of even and odd. So for 7 and 8 here, we are going to just uh, describe uh, two things about the graph. We're going to describe, again, the end behavior, and then we're going to describe how many possible turning points it has. We're not going to know exactly how many turning points it has without graphing it, uh, but we are going to determine... Uh, the possible numbers it can have. So for number seven here, let's go ahead and start with the end behavior. Uh, the degree of this, or excuse me, the leading coefficient of this one is positive. Okay, it's a one half. And then the degree is three, which is odd. Okay, so uh, from what we did with end behavior just a few minutes ago, we know that the right side is going to be going upwards and the left side will be going downwards. So this is down and up in behavior. And then we're going to look at how many possible turning points. Well, the degree of this graph is, uh, this polynomial is three, so the maximum number it can have is two, because again, uh, the number of turning points is always one less than the degree uh, for the maximum. So this graph could possibly have two turning points. It could also have zero turning points, okay? Two is the maximum, but remember any odd degree uh, polynomial can have an even number of turning points, so this one could also have zero. It's more than likely it's going to have the maximum, which is two, but every once in a while you'll have graphs that don't necessarily have the maximum, uh, so that's why we include the or zero here. Okay, so we have down and up in behavior, and then for turning points, um, we have two or zero. And then finally for number eight, okay, we'll go ahead and start with uh, in behavior. So the leading coefficient for number eight the highest degree, um, exponent is a 6, so that means that the leading coefficient is negative 1. So we have a negative leading coefficient. And then the degree is 6, so an even degree. So that means that the end behavior for this, the right side will be going downwards. The left side will be following the right side and also going downwards. So we have down and down in behavior for the possible number of turning points. Our degree is 6, so we know that the maximum number of turning points is 5, 
but we could also have odd number of turning points below 5. So we could also have 3 turning points or 1 turning point. Okay, I know that was a lot of information in this video. Um, a lot of it's very basic, but if you need to review um, any of it, especially the new information, feel free to do that. Also, feel free to send me an email so I can address any questions you have uh, the day uh, we talk about this in class. And until I see you, have a nice day. You're all wonderful people. Take care.